Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. We got a different flavor today in the bullpen. This is not going to be a debate segment because I agree with these young people virtually 100%. This is going to be a highlight and an opportunity to learn what they are doing and why it is so important. We've talked about this for a very long time on Indisputable. I've been critical of the administration as it relates to the handling of voting rights and delivering on what they campaigned on. Kyla Frank, Unpack National Student Organizing Manager is a graduate of Virginia State University. How are you, Kyla? I'm doing really well today. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you for being on and also we have Dominic Dikiakio, who is a West Virginia canvasser and ally. How are you? Doing great, thanks for having us. Thank you both for being on the show. So there are a lot of people may not know exactly what you're doing. So Kyle, I'm gonna start with you. Tell people the genesis of your movement and what you're trying to bring attention to. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so Unpack is a national organization of young people and students organizing for democracy reform through the passage of the Freedom to Vote Act, now the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act. And so we have been organizing for the past year around this issue. We have been calling, emailing, um, sending social media posts to our senators. We actually met with 20 Senate offices and unfortunately, all of that wasn't enough, even though that's exactly what our senators tell us to do to advocate for ourselves and to tell them how to, for us to communicate with them how to um, legislate. And so we decided to escalate because this issue on democracy reform is urgent. The window to our democracy is quickly closing and we literally had no time left. And so on December 6th, we launched our hunger strike for democracy in Arizona. And I was joined by 19 other brave young students, hunger striking, putting their very bodies on the line in order to raise more awareness on this issue and to urge and plead with our senators to pass this crucial piece of legislation. You know, I'm sure you're realizing this as you have these meetings. Most politicians don't give a damn about people. Uh, they care about the corporate interest that continues to manipulate the political narrative and the political landscape as we know it. They simply campaign as if they care about people. And so you're getting that pushback, I know. Uh, Dominic, let me go to you. Uh, for years, I actually was a canvasser myself in my younger days. And I enjoyed the direct interaction with people because I knew things that other people did not know because I was in direct conversation with people on an everyday basis. Tell us what you're hearing on the ground. Well, I mean, despite West Virginia being a uh, red state, um, I've canvassed uh, about 3,000 people of the um, 70,000 doors we've knocked uh, throughout West Virginia. And uh, the message is clear amongst Republicans, Democrats, independents, progressives, libertarians, etc. cetera. Uh, money has uh, hijacked our democracy. Dark money and special interests are just running rampant. And especially in West Virginia, we had, uh, we've had the opioid epidemic and it's just taken the lives of so many. and the pharmaceutical industries have been paying off for politicians to continue to do what they've been doing. Uh, let me go back to you, Kyla, about what's the approach, what's the content strategy, uh, what is your advocacy strategy? When you meet with these elected officials, what is the demand? What are you telling them you would like to see happen? Most definitely, and so um, for Unpack, our strategy runs on along a two-pronged approach. Um, educating young people and students about democracy reform, connecting the issues that they care about to democracy reform, and then using that raised awareness um, to pressure our senators to pass this bill. And again, for the last, since March of last year, we have been organizing young people across the country. We are active in over 20 states. Um, and like Dominic said, we ran the largest canvassing operation in West Virginia's history. History. Wow. And we knew that um, Joe Manchin and Senator Cinema were two of our main targets because we had 48 other Democratic senators who were on board with this bill. Joe Manchin co-authored co this bill. This is his bill. Um, Senator Cinema made several statements saying that she supported this bill, but that's not enough. We need action and not just talk. And so again, we had to escalate because the bill was voted on four times and failed. Voted on and failed. And the Democratic Party cannot call itself the party of democracy. 
if you were not going to prioritize the most crucial legislation that we've seen in our lifetime. And so um, again, we were urging our senators, none of that was enough. And so we had to literally put our bodies, our health, our lives on the line for them to pay attention to us. And still that was not enough, which is why we returned on January 13th to further escalate our tactics. We were joined by faith leaders who joined our hunger strike. We had more than 50 young people striking for democracy. And we also risked the rest and got arrested. You know, you all are the reason why this country will end up finding its way. It's because of young leaders like you, you are my future leaders. Uh, I want to make sure that you are always encouraged because not only do I support you, there's an entire team here at TYT and beyond. We support you tremendously. Not only do we support you in sentiment, we will support you in resources. So I'm making a pledge today of a thousand. I'm going to start with a thousand dollars directly to your organization. I will make that happen today. And I want you to just give us additional insight into what you think may happen in this midterm election if Democrats do not deliver what they campaigned on. Um, do you wanna do that? Mm-hmm. So in 2020, young people delivered for Democrats. Mm-hmm. We put a lot of our time and energy into a campaign that promised us many things. Student loan debt forgiveness, um, caps on pharmaceutical drug prices, and many other policy reforms that would really improve our lives. And so it is almost a slap in the face, not only for for our entire Senate, who is beholden to arcane Senate rules that were even originally in the, you know, a part of the Senate or Constitution. And so it's very frustrating to see that um, this is the direction that they're going. Um, I, I also want to just give more insight into the sacrifice that the young people made, I made, Dominic here made on this issue. And young people will not turn out for Democrats, black people will not turn out for Democrats or Republicans at all <laughs> because they have literally allowed our democracy to crumble. Yep. Um, the voters, the amount of voter suppression that has popped around this country, there is, it's going to set us back generations. And so, again, we had to put everything on the line for this issue because we don't have time to wait. I cannot, I, I can't not be in this, in this fight and in this struggle. I literally don't have a choice. None of us do. And. Um, I'm getting emotional right now because I lost 18 pounds between these two hunger strikes. In total, I, I, I hunger strike for 21 days, 15 days the first time, and I had to end my strike due to health reasons the second time. Um, I missed time with my friends and my family. I had to watch other young people miss that time too and put their bodies and health on the line. Um, It was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to experience in my life. And the fact that our senators failed us, two in particular, failed us and failed the country, um, it's hard, it's difficult. But this fight is not over. And Dominic, tell them why this fight is not over. (laughs) Well, because we have a lot of uh, issues that young people face, like student debt, climate crisis, and so on. I mean, we have to keep fighting, keep organizing to get these issues passed. And you know what? Go ahead, go ahead, sister. My apology. I want people to look at this moment and look at the sacrifice that we made and know that this is possible. Change is possible, and we will be back. And I want them to know that we are here. Um, for the long run, and anyone who want, who resonates with this message, who wants to join us, they can. You have the ability to. Just because we're young people doesn't mean that we can't advocate and fight for what we deserve. Our right to vote is written within the Constitution. I will have that. We will have that. Our, my generation will have that. And we will get on the front lines again and again and again 
until our senators and this country faces us directly and gives us what we want and what we deserve. You know, um, to my uh, dear sister Kyla and my brother Dominique, you know, I just I wanted to do an interview, right? And um, you know, you should. You all should have to starve yourselves. You know, in many ways, <clears throat> all of us, all of us, we bear some blame here for not giving you all a better democracy at some level. Some of us have come back and said, you know, we're gonna work harder than ever before. We're gonna partner with organizations and people like you. But you all are literally starving yourselves in order to protect democracy that will protect the nation. But they wanna call you radical. They wanna say that you're un-American and call you communist and everything else. But it's you who will save this democracy if it can even be saved. So here's what I wanna do for everyone who is watching because we can all be part of the change, you know, Dr. King said we can all be great because we can all serve. So what can people do? Anyone who watches this interview, what can people do to help move the needle for the movement you are leading right now? Well, um, first off, just just organize and find people that uh, share your common values, and uh, you can just canvas uh, if you're at a university table at a university. And just you know, stay connected with those people and, and just organize for change. There is a large movement brewing. This is not a new struggle. This is a decades long struggle. And so I urge everyone to look into lo local and statewide organizations that are working around democracy reform and join those. Um, I urge them to follow us on social media. On Twitter, it's Let's Unpack, that's L-E-T-S. UN dash PAC on Instagram, un underscore pack, UN underscore PAC. Pay attention. Um, call your senators. Continue to call them and let them know that we're going to be back and that you want the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act to pass this year. And inaction is not an option anymore. And um, you brought up MLK. I want to just say um, a quote from him. He said that voting is the foundational stone to political action. If we want to see a world where we get our needs met, we want to see a world where the policies that we truly deeply care about are passed. Um, that cannot happen if we do not have access to voting. That's right. That cannot happen. And I refuse to go back. Because my ancestors, the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he fought way too hard, way too hard. Many people have lost their literal lives in this. And so the, the least I could do is starve myself to bring attention to this issue. We did everything we could. And now I need the whole country, if you are an American, to stand up and do something about this. We cannot wait any longer. We cannot wait any longer. I appreciate you both. Um, tell people how they can contribute financially to Unpack. If you go to our website, un-pac.org, you can find our landing page where it has a link to our donation link. Or there's a link to our, um, to donate. Um, and I also just want to make clear, this is not a partisan issue. Um, Americans are united. Um, and their support for the provisions within the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act. This is something that we can all get behind. We are truly a united generation in this struggle. This is not right versus left. This is top versus the bottom. Yeah. And so again, we need to do everything that we can. The sacrifices that I've seen my colleagues and Fred made, friends make was tremendous. Truly tremendous yeah. and inspiring to see. Um, and that's what it truly means to be an American. Them right there, those strikers. You know, um, you all are our heroes. You both, and those that work with you, and those that sacrifice. Uh, we are here to support you uh, in uh, sentiment and in very tangible ways. 
So there's something else we can do here, please just let us know. Very thankful for both of you, Kyle and Dominique. Thank you both for being on Indisputable. Thank you. All right, I want to remind everybody. The other side of this political coin, you know who their hero is? Kyle Rittenhouse, people that take life. They celebrate people that take life. We celebrate people that protect it. We celebrate people that want to make it better. There's a big difference between your values and their values, okay? Just remember that.